2019 one man lawn crew trailer setup. All right, guys, we're going to start with the truck that gets us to the job site, tows the trailer and all the equipment there. It's a 2014 Silverado Z71 half ton. It's sitting on a uh, rough country leveling kit with 20 inch helos and uh, 33 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Moving on in the bed, we have a Cobalt truck box. In here, I like to keep the two cycle engine oil, uh, tarps, socket set, tool set, just stuff you need to grab real quick. Uh, it's right here, hop out of the truck, boom, grab it, good to go. Another thing I like to have is uh, in this backpack, I keep sunscreen, uh, got to keep protected while you're out there. Neosporin, Band-Aids, uh, Ibuprofen, Tums, we eat a lot of fast food while we're out, out on the job. So um, of course, need some Tums to keep you straight. Uh, and just essentials like that so you don't have to run back home. You've got them right there and it keeps you going throughout the day. Moving on, we've got the uh, 2017 Homesteader Patriot enclosed trailer. Got the side door here so you can uh, pop it open, grab your gas cans, shovels, stuff like that. Easy access to that. This is a 6 by 12, 6 foot wide, 12 foot long trailer with the Vinos. Got the ramp door in the back. And we'll move on to that, to the mowers that gets the job done. Last year I got this uh, brand new. It's a 2018 Skag Tiger Cat 2. Uh, I think right now it's got about 210 hours on it. It's got the Kawasaki engine on it. The FX691V. Does a great job. This one's a 52 inch cut. Uh, can't say enough good things about this mower. Uh, it's got the Tiger Eye on it to let you know when the battery's low, uh, when it needs an oil change, that sort of thing. Also has the two fuel tanks. Uh, with both of those full, I can get about eight residential yards done. And just a couple weeks ago, I purchased the uh, 2019 Xmark uh, Turf Tracer. This is a 48 inch cut. I went with the 48 inch uh, because I've got some gates that I need to get in the backyard that has heels. Um, it's just a great mower. I, I actually did a post a couple days ago about how well it stripes, laid down some beautiful stripes. But um, since I got the 52, I went with the 48 on this. Mainly what I do is residential, but this has just been a great mower so far, I think. Yeah, I've got 31.1 hours on it in, like I said, maybe 10, 14 days. And at the beginning of the season, my push mower from last year kind of, it was done. So it was time to replace it. And I went with the uh, 2019 Honda HRX 217. This is the HYA. The only upgrade you can get from this is the key start. Uh, I didn't really see the point in getting a key start on it. Uh, this thing, it fires up on the first pull pretty much every time. I uh, haven't had any trouble getting it uh, started yet. First, second time max pull, it's good to go. It's got the hydrostatic drive on it, so whenever you grip it, get ready to roll. If you've got a full throttle, it, it takes a bit to keep up with it. It, it is quite fast, and it does a heel great. Also, it's got the three-in-one system. You can mulch, you can bag, or it does discharge. And what Honda changed this year in 2019, it does have the 200cc engine on it, and it is quite powerful. I, I've taken it in uh, some pretty tall grass, mulched it great. The yard looked awesome after, uh, after I was done. Two things that have really impressed me with this mower is, um, the mulching on it, it does a great job mulching. And at the beginning of the season, there was still some leaves left over from the fall last year. And I just kind of blew them out in the yard and this thing sucked them up like a vacuum cleaner. Just did a phenomenal job. I actually had a uh, customer watching me do it and she was impressed at how well it, it sucked all the leaves up. And you just bag them, dump them, and the yard looks great. All right, guys, moving on inside the trailer. Or, uh, I'll go over the sticks next. Um, this is the steel FS91R. This is my third season with this trimmer. Um, I know there's more powerful trimmers out there than this, but 
in tall grass, it, it's impressed me all three seasons. Um, it, it just has a ton of power. Uh, it's just been a good go-to weed eater, but um, did, or trimmer. I'm sorry. Um, this year, I did have trouble out of it. The drive shaft uh, went out, and I ran over to uh, my local dealer, who is a steel dealer and an Echo dealer. It's Cox Tractor here in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. So. If you live in Southwest Virginia or Upper East Tennessee, be sure to go by and give those guys a holler. They have a, a great repair shop. The sales team is awesome and the parts counter is great. They just got everything you need. They're an Echo dealer, they're a Skag dealer, Xmark dealer. Um, matter of fact, about almost everything you see in the video today came from Cox Tractor, so thank you guys. Next, whenever I took it over there to get the steel fix, uh, the sales guy, Carter, told me to try out the Echo SRM225. It retails for 199 bucks. It's not a commercial trimmer. However, after running with this big thing for two seasons, you grab this, it's so much lighter, and your residential yards that you do once a week, the weeds aren't too tall, this thing just zips right through them, and it's just a piece of cake. After running with this thing, you feel like you're, you're just grabbing a feather going through and it, it gets the job done real, really well. Next, uh, I got this at the beginning of the season this year also. It's a steel HL94. Let me pop this off and show it to you guys. This is the hedge trimmer and it does have the articulating head on it, which is great. This thing got, cuts through some really thick brush, does great on hedges and it's just a, a great tool to have on your truck, uh, especially for those tall holly bushes, stuff like that. It, it just does a, a great job. Check that one out. Moving on, um, back in November, whenever Steel and Echo was having the big release dates on the new blowers, I actually got the PB8010T and did some uh, fall cleanups with it. Guys, this thing has all the power you could ever ask for. It's just a, a, an impressive blower. Whenever you fire it up and put it on your back, it's like having a, a motorcycle engine blowing the leaves around. It, it just does a great job. Also, I have the Echo 580T blower. As far as everyday use uh, on residential yards, this is really all you need. It's got plenty of power. Of course, it's not like the 8010. It's not going to be that strong but doing driveways and sidewalks and stuff this guy does a great job second pull every time choke it full choke first time second time half choke it fires right up another new uh, tool I added this year is the echo 2620 sorry PPT it's the pole saw it does extend another uh, three feet I think I think the total feet it goes out to is like 13 feet six inches don't quote me on that you guys can look up the specs but this thing will go through logs eight inches wide easy as pie it, it just does a great job and my thing is have as much on your trailer as you can and that you can afford to do because whenever you're out on the job site it seems like there's always neighbors come up that say hey i've got a branch down can you you take care of that for me or I need this sawed up, you got like 30 minutes and you can pick up 20, 50, sometimes 100 bucks just for taking an extra 30 minutes to an hour if you've got it in your day. And if you already have the tools on your trailer, boom, there you go, just extra money in your pocket. A couple years ago during uh, Steeler Deal Days, I picked up the uh, MS-170. I think it uh, ran during the dealer days for 159. This guy's paid for itself time and time again it's just a great piece of equipment to have on your trailer no you're not going to cut down big oaks or anything like that with it but just small trees and stuff like that it, it does a great job i also have the poland pro hedge trimmer i've been dying to replace this guy i've had it for about six years now and i keep saying whenever it dies I, i'm going to upgrade to a steel but for some reason this guy just won't quit um fires up easy cuts through the hedges great so I really don't have a reason to get rid of it and if it still works why well, replace it 
onto the gas cans. This really killed me to do this, but because of the price point on it, but uh, actually y'all, it's worth every penny. It's the sure can. This is the five gallon capacity one. They retail, I think I got this on Amazon for like 48, 49 bucks, but it does a great job. It's got the medicine cap on here. Just unscrew that, boom, pull the trigger. Good to go, no spillage, no leakage. You don't have to worry about the uh, rubber seals going bad on it and stuff. It's been worth every penny so far. I, I'm really pleased with that. Uh, this one, whenever the seals go bad in it for the weed eater gas, trimmer gas, uh, I will be replacing it with a sure can. And I've got the gallon of uh, Spetricide weed control here. The reason I've got that is because you'll notice a big empty spot on my wall where my backpack steel SG, I think it's, what is it, SG120 backpack sprayer goes. But unfortunately it's in the shop right now. Tomorrow's Monday, hopefully that thing will be ready guys. And uh, we can get out there taking care of those spring weeds. And of course you got the uh, just hand tools, different shovels, the edging shovel. I like to keep a hoodie in here. Some mornings you go out, it's a little chillier than other, other mornings. Got the uh, pick. I keep it tied up because I really don't like using that thing. It, it'll wear you back out. So. And that's about it, guys. I would like to do uh, the upcoming videos. I would like to review each of the products y'all have seen today. Tell you what I think of them, how they perform, which ones I like, which ones not so much. I used to think that uh, choosing equipment was kind of like either you're a Ford guy or a Chevy guy or a Dodge guy. And I wanted all steel on my trailer. I wanted nothing but skag on my trailer. But after talking to my sales guy, each one does some do this better than the other. And it's just talk to your dealers because they know what the equipment does. They know the area you live in if you live in a real flat part of the country you probably don't need a walk behind mower um, that thing will hug a hill great and some things that will hug a hill but some of them here in east tennessee you just don't want to take them on because it's not safe that's why i got to walk behind but uh like i said i'd like to do a review on all these tell you what i think please leave a comment down below because i'm really doing this uh, video because i want to learn from you guys uh, this is my 13th season. However, this is my first season full-time. The previous 12, I've done it on the side. So back in February, decided to go hardcore in this uh, and do it full-time. My big fear of that was not getting enough work, but as it turns out, I'm getting more work than I can handle. So now I gotta grow. And obviously before y'all start commenting on it, because I know you're going to, is the trailer six by 12 how are you going to fit all this equipment in here well the fact is you're not so the next growth that PH does i hope is a bigger trailer so i can actually take both mowers with me so uh hit that like button guys check us out on facebook i believe there's a link on there to our facebook page as well and like i said go check out your local dealers ask them for advice because you don't have to stick with one brand or an another uh there's a bunch of great brands out there and they all do the job really well. So thank you guys and see you next time. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about the racks in the trailer also because uh, if you're just starting out in this, you don't have the money to go out and buy the more expensive brand uh, of racks. I know they can run 200, 260 bucks, depending on like if you're getting a one trimmer, two, three or four trimmer rack. I went with the three trimmer rack and also the uh, line feed rack. Uh, what I was going to tell you is this is a buyer's rack, B-U-I-E-R-S, I got it on Amazon. I think this ran about 25 bucks. This is my third season with this rack. It, it does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, it's sturdy on the wall, hadn't had a bit of trouble out of it, but that'll save you some money over some of the bigger brand name uh, trimmer line racks also the trimmer rack itself not the best in the world I, I'm I'll admit that I'd give it maybe a three stars it's also a buyers um, the trimmers do spin 
but they do stay in place. I, I've never got back here in the back of my trailer and have a have a stick in the floor. They're always there, but you can't expect to spin. But this rack was 99 bucks on Amazon. Uh, like I said, I don't have the money right now. I'd like to upgrade it, but for another 150, 160 bucks, uh, I can ride, run with this for the time being. It does what it's supposed to do. Also, I didn't splurge for a huge uh, blower rack. And <clears throat> this is just a hook that I got from Lowe's, I think like five bucks. But y'all, it's been on here. This is the third season. You can see it's sturdy. You can move the whole trailer whenever you shake it. The blower hangs on it great. This is actually a strap off of my trimmer. I just hung it up here to keep the, the tube safe. I just flop it up there, stick that in the strap. Good to go. It's like this whenever I get out to go again. And um, just got the, I'm sure you guys have seen these clips. I think I got those on Amazon too for like five sets of them or like six bucks, something like that. Just pop it off and good to go. Uh, on enclosed trailers, you're always looking to save space. Uh, what I mounted the trimmer racks to, I just popped them on there. You can see it's out of the way. I got my broom up here. It's tucked away, but it's all here whenever I need it. Got the hose down there. And these racks are actually, they go together. Uh, this is what comes in a package. You get both of these and assortment of different hooks. Um, I came from Lowe's, of course, it's the Cobalt brand. I've got it back here as well. And this is what the hooks look like whenever um, they come in the package. So what I did, I just took some channel locks and you can tell I just bent them up a little bit to hold my hedge trimmer and my chainsaw. And these guys stay here. The biggest complaint is like they'll leave marks, but it's hard to have a trailer that's not going to get dinged up if you think you're going to keep the trailer perfect. Uh, I don't see how it's possible. You can see where I used to have the chainsaws hanging, uh, chainsaw and hedge trimmer. It will do some damage. I would like a new paint job on this, but right now I'm not worried about it. Uh, a couple years ago, when I got the trailer new. I painted it white and I put Valspar um, patio and deck paint, non-slip paint on here. Uh, so whenever the ramp's wet, the motors will still go in and plus it, it doesn't get slick, but as you can tell, it, it's ready for another coat. But uh, I'll probably do that at the end of this season. Hopefully it'll make it through. Um, but just, guys, just where, where you can pinch a penny here and there to keep you rolling. No, you don't want your equipment rolling around in the floor of the trailer. So anywhere you can save money, I chose to do it on the racks on this. Hopefully like next year as we grow, uh, we can upgrade. But for now, these things are doing a fine job.